For the past seven years, Mount Holyoke Professor of Astronomy Darby Dyer and her team have been working on the design on one of the instruments on the Mars Science Lab called ChemCam. It is a laser that shoots at a rock from seven meters away, turning part of that rock into plasma, further allowing an interpretation of its chemistry. In her lab, she works with a Mars chamber and a laser-induced breakdown spectrometer, which will be able to analyze data received from the Curiosity rover on Mars. This technique is a new analytical technique and I got involved with the team right after it was selected, so seven, seven years ago. Um, and they were looking for samples for calibration and, you know, look around you. We have thousands of calibration samples, so that's how I got involved. If you're going to be analyzing rocks on another planet, it would be nice if you took rocks from Earth with you and analyzed them under those conditions because then you would have something to compare with. So there's a metallic, there's a titanium metal calibration target that's about this big, um, and it's got nine holes in it, and we made nine fake rocks, not, not Holyoke and a bunch of other people. The target we made here, actually. Um, but we made nine fake rocks, and we, have, we still have pieces of them here, and then pieces of them are on Mars, pieces of them are at Los Alamos, and in France, and at Johnson Space Center. So all of us can compare the spectra that we get on those targets with the spectra that they get on Mars, and so that way if there are any instrumentation problems, we'll be able to sort of get a better handle on what they are and correct for them. See, there's just a bunch of rock dust in there, and then we press them in that pellet press. When we get spectrum from Mars, we match the spectrum from Mars against our library of wiggly lines and essentially figure out what's the best match. In order for the process to work, the atmosphere of Mars must be created in the chamber. The atmosphere on Mars is about one one hundredth the atmosphere of Earth, so we need a vacuum in order to simulate Mars. And because we need a vacuum, we have to have this very fancy looking stainless steel box. Um, which we then, so we take and put a vacuum on it, and then we also throw a little bit of CO2 in there, carbon dioxide. You know, the nominal mission life is one Martian year, which is about two Earth years. So it's quite likely that this thing could go on for 10 or 15 years. Um, so I know it's, it's frustrating because the public is all jazzed about this rover and getting exciting data back and we're already getting great images but in terms of the scientific excitement that's going to come over the coming months. You know as we know more about what's going on on Mars we will keep adding to our spectral library in, in an effort to get samples in our library that are more and more similar to what we think is on Mars. So to me participating in a Mars mission, sure it's about you know, looking for life and, you know, the achievement of landing a rover on another planet. But to me, the most important thing about this is actually that kids and people on the street are talking about science. And our world needs this desperately. Professor Dyer says she's proud to partake in world-class research at Mount Holyoke College, and she says she'll continue working on the Mars mission for the rest of her career. This is Christina Culiabino reporting for GazetteNet.